So the average American, they're experiencing more reactive hypoglycemia because they're on the yes. sodas, they're on the Milky Way bar and hiding in their desk drawer at lunch. The person listening to us, who's hopefully relatively dialed in, they're going to just be more in the standard. We would just call it to us, maybe a standard hypoglycemia situation. And then how do the adrenals play into that? Because what you're seeing is happening is that let's say, and this happened to me, I can tell you firsthand what happened, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of open it up. So intermittent fasting, you're saying that could, could drive that. And you're saying there, you're kind of hinting at the fact that maybe the adrenals are too weak to help. You're seeing the uh, adrenaline can be released and it'll crank it up, but you're saying, okay, I got like a recording stop and start. So just making sure we're good. Okay. So you're saying that in a normal situation, the hypoglycemia can start to happen. Adrenaline should come up, kind of bump you up, give you the little nitrous booster, but you, then you need cortisol yep. to push you to the finish line. But you're saying in a case of adrenal stress, the cortisol may not be able to get you up to the right amount. And that's how an intermittent fasting situation could be not good for you. Is that right? Yeah. So then if you don't have good adrenaline output or catecholamine output, like, so how do we know that as we look at organic acids, if we see imbalances in vanomandolate or homovanolate, these are amino acids that are precursors for dopamine and adrenaline. And again, dopamine is a precursor to adrenaline. So when you're constantly stimulating adrenaline, you're actually pulling dopamine down and dopamine is really important for satisfaction, mood, focus, right? So if you're chronically stimulating adrenaline, you're going to have adrenaline issues. You're going to have dopamine issues that can create a whole bunch of problems. We're going to know that because we're going to see an organic acid test showing a lot of imbalances in those catecholamines. And if our blood sugar, uh, if we, are, we have very low cortisol, we run a, a good quality Dutch test. We see chronically low free and total cortisol. It's going to be hard for our body to bring that blood sugar back up and we could kind of stay a little bit more hypo and that can cause that irritability, that faintness, that fatigue. Uh, cognitive issues, mood issues, brain fog, it can create all those problems. So if we don't have good, when people talk about adrenals, people mostly just think about cortisol when it comes to adrenals. They don't think about the adrenaline, catecholamine, dopamine connection. And so when we talk about adrenals, we have to really look at the outer part of the adrenals. That's the cortex. That's where cortisol lives. That's where aldosterone lives because we'll talk about it in a minute aldosterone plays a big role with minerals and holding on to minerals and if our minerals go low like we see in pots right which is a postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome that has to do with minerals being low sodium chloride potassium right that can create a lot of symptoms similar to hypoglycemia and so we have to look at the uh, the cortisol component but also the adrenaline the adrenaline tends to happen more in the medulla medulla m for more middle part of the adrenal gland so it's good to look at both. And that's where having a high quality adrenal test that looks at free and total cortisol, as well as an adrenaline dopamine via the organic acids to look at what's happening with the catecholamines and neurotransmitters.